In this video, we look at how to make animations interactive with the state machine. The state machine is a visual way to connect animations. You can set up transitions between animations and define their logic. This allows you to build interactive motion graphics that are ready to be implemented into your product, game, or website. State machines create a new level of collaboration between designers and developers without the need for a complicated handoff. To build a state machine, you first need some timeline animations. Then, add a new state machine to the animations list. When a state machine is selected, a graph replaces the timeline. Drag and drop your animations onto the graph to create some states. Connect your new states with transitions. When you hover near a state, you'll see a dot appear next to it. Click and drag on the dot to create a transition from one state to another. The transition from the entry state defines which state should play first. A transition from the any state will happen regardless of what state is currently active, provided the conditions on that transition are met. A transition to the exit state will exit the state machine. Before adding logic to the transitions, you need to create at least one input. Inputs are values that are controlled by your app or game engine. Think of inputs as the contract between your design and engineering teams. Your product's code can change the values of the inputs at any time, and the state machine reacts to those changes. Inputs can be of three types, number, boolean, and trigger. Number is just a numerical value. Boolean is a true-false value represented by a checkbox. Trigger is also a true-false value, but it immediately gets reset to false. Name your inputs appropriately, as these are the names that your engineers will need to use in their code. Select a transition to view its properties. Duration determines how long the transition between two animations will take. During this time, the two animations will mix together as one ramps up and the other ramps down. A value of zero has no mixing and instantly changes from one state to the next. Duration can be a fixed time value or a percentage based on the length of the beginning state. Exit time determines how much time must pass before the transition can happen, even if the conditions have already been met. This can be useful if you have an animation that needs to reach a specific point before it transitions. You can use time values, milliseconds or seconds, or a percentage. A value of 100% means that the transition can only happen once the entire animation is played. A transition can have no conditions, one condition, or multiple conditions. If it has no conditions, then the transition will happen as soon as the exit time is reached. A common use case for this is if you have an intro animation that needs to play fully before moving to another state. If a transition has any conditions, then all conditions must be met before the transition happens. Hit the plus button to add a condition. Select an input and configure the rest of the statement. This changes based on the input type. For example, if the input is a boolean, you'll need to set whether you want the condition to be met when it's true or false. Once everything's set up, hit the play button to see your state machine in action. Change the inputs to test your transitions and ensure everything's working properly. Let's take another look at states. As you saw before, when you drag an animation onto the graph, a new state is created with that animation. However, you can also play multiple animations on a state. This is called a blend state, and it allows you to mix animations together. You can use this to create all kinds of interesting interactions like pull to refresh animations, creative loading bars, facial expressions, or control the direction of a character. To make a blend state, select the state, then change it to either a 1D blend state or additive blend. A 1D blend state allows you to blend animations using a number input. After choosing the blend type, you'll want to pick which input will control this blend state. Then, add animations with the plus button and set the threshold for each. The thresholds for each animation determines the range of your blend state. In our example, the range is from 0 to 100. That means that one animation is playing fully at each end of that range, while anything in between is a blend of both animations. You can see this represented in the diagram above the animations list. As you change the input value, watch to see how the position in this range changes the mix amount of each animation. An additive blend state allows you to map any input directly to any animation. 
This can be useful if you want to have exact control over animations, rather than blending them indirectly with a single input. We'll cover common use cases for each blend type in a new video series that will be dedicated to the state machine. Stay tuned for news on that. To wrap things up, here are a few things to keep in mind when we're working with the state machine. You can only have one active state per layer. Layers share the same inputs and run at the same time. You can open the console to see a log of your state machine events when it's running. Use the console to understand what's happening under the hood if a state machine isn't behaving the way you'd expect. You can disable transitions, allowing you to isolate only the specific ones you want to test. State machines allow creators to continue iterating deep into the development cycle. Provided the inputs stay the same, you can change everything else about the state machine, including graphics, animations, states, and transitions, and none of your product's code needs to be changed. This brings a new level of connectivity between design and dev teams while enabling designers to iterate continuously. That's it for now, but we have plenty more features planned for the state machine. Take what you've learned and try it out for yourself. And don't forget, share your creations with the rest of the Rive community. We'll see you in the next video.